Hey guys, uh, this is rather an unexpected inbox review. Um, it was rather an impulse buy. Um, main reason being, as we all know, the Vulcan this year is being grounded due to, I, well they say health and safety reasons, it's just basically that three of the sponsors have actually pulled the plug. Um, due to cost grounds and I think quite frankly and I may be outspoken in saying this I think it's very short-sighted of them uh, considering this is our national heritage um, it was a revolutionary bomber in the Cold War and the only time it actually saw action was in the Falklands War on um, one of the longest bombing raids in history um, so that will never be taken away from the Vulcan um, I have come across this kit myself before, um, and uh, yeah, um, I know Lenny recently did a build on his website um, on Facebook, which is RTB model, so check that out. Um, he did a super build on the Vulcan, and although it made him pull his hair out, and she is a bit of a filler queen, I will tell you, because I've actually come across this kit before some years ago when it was first issued. Um, it is a big kit, even for 172nd, and uh, as I say, there are a few fit issues. Uh, but I have actually um, going to get on top of that with this, this build, uh, because basically I've not only got this kit in, I have sourced and ordered... Uh, the wolf pack upgrade set which you see here um, from eBay at a very good rate um, if you want to know what the number is it is WFT2047 um, source it out on eBay or even on wolf packs own email address you know, I'm sure they've got one um, I'll just show you what is in this set this is what you get. You get a set of exhausts, uh, some etch brass for the details and the air brakes, uh, a revised back radome, as well as, I think that looks like flaps for the wings. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to use that. I'm also going to source some uh, wheel bay set, just to give it that added detail. And I think you've got the option of doing another Vulcan, um, if you will bear with me. Um, it's this one here, which is XM, on, let me see, 607, which was the one that was involved in the Black Buck raid um, some years ago. This isn't the scheme it was wearing, because that actual Vulcan was a sort of dark sea grey underneath, and it had um, missile pylons with uh, exosets underneath uh, for it to be housed. Uh, but as I say... She is now actually parked at uh, on Waddington's apron and preserved for posterity. Um, so, yeah, there you go. But, as I say, I'm ordered that set in just to give it some enhanced detail. Um, I know Lenny didn't go that far. Uh, but, as I say, it's I've seen some reviews on this and it actually does improve the quality of the Vulcan kit itself. And as far as I know, this is the only Vulcan in injection moulded form on the market. But it is a beast. And even the box, as you can see, is huge. Um, so, but uh, as I say, I've gotten a point with this mighty lady for the last time at Dunsfold Wheels and Wings this coming Saturday. And if anybody's interested in the show, do go along. Um, I went to it for the first time. Uh, around about, oh, it must be about four years, four or five years ago now. Um, and because obviously this is the last year she's flying, I made a point of going to the show this year. And I will be filming some of the display um, on my phone here. Um, so depending on how it comes out, if it comes out well, then I will upload it and you can watch it for yourselves. Okay. But anyway, getting back to the kit, um, it was one of three aircraft, as we well know, for the deterrent, the nuclear deterrent throughout the 1950s and 60s. Up until around about 1969, um, as the V-Force, um, and stood a long, good, steady service um, 
the prototype unfortunately crashed um, at an air show, I think it was at Saiwa, killing all the crew and uh, another one was lost after doing a world tour and coming back into Heathrow from a world tour. Um, but uh, apart from that, the Vulcan has had a faultless record air-wise. And the only time she was ever used in anger was for <clears throat> the Black Buck raids uh, during the Falklands War, which were, and still are, on record, the longest bombing raid ever to take part in history. And I do have a book on that raid, if I can find it, well, I did have. Um... I must have it stowed away, uh, but I'll tell you more about it anyway, um, about that. Or there is indeed a film on YouTube uh, in regard to the bombing raid, and I do heartily recommend you watch it. Um, as I say, um, finishing all the waffle and the history lesson, let's get on with the review of the kit. Um, as far as I know, this is the only injection moulded kit of the Vulcan. And this one, as you can see, depicts the B-2. And in fact, this exact aircraft, X-Ray Hotel 558, was the first ever B-2 to go into service. And she's now, what, 53 years old and she's still going strong. And uh, it's incredible to see her do that almost bow roll and that found fabulous takeoff at Fairford this year. It just shows you the... Greatness of the design in itself by um, A.V. Rowe himself. And apparently Rory Falk, who was one of the test pilots, actually barrel rolled one at the Farm Brea show one year. <laughs> Needless to say, he got a ticking off and now I've happened again. But it just showed you the strength and durability of this aircraft. Um, so anyway, without further ado, we get on with the review itself. Uh, if anybody wants to get hold of these, and I'm sure many are buying it this year, the kit number on the box um, is AO50097. And I'll just, if you want to freeze that and take a note of the kit number, by all means do so. As you can see, depicted on here is an actual photograph of X ray Hotel 558. Um, and this box actually came out in 2010 when she was celebrating her 50th um, year of flying. And uh, it's actually thinking about it, she's now 55 years old. So she's quite a grand old lady. Um, but a graceful one when you see her in the skies. Um, on, as I say, this is a genuine photo of the Vulcan itself. Uh, and then on the side, you've got another photo of her again. And this comes with a starter set, because this is the actual starter set. Which is glue and some paints and some brushes. And then on the side here, you've got a plan side view of the Vulcan. And also some information about the kit itself. And then on the back, you've actually got a photo of the assembled kit, which you can see there. And obviously there she is again, and a little bit of a footnote about the actual aircraft herself. Okay, right, now for the benefit of this video, I've actually already taken the instructions and the sprue out of the box. It is a side opening box, which I'm surprised at, because when this was first released, it was a top opening box. And unlike the previous uh, release, it only comes in the one screen, one colour scheme, which is X-Ray Hotel 558. Now, in the original one, you had the option of, I think, around about three aircraft. One in anti-flash white, one in the first camo scheme towards the end of the 60s, and then one, obviously, for, in fact, it was for um, an aircraft during the 70s. And also XM607, uh, which was the one you involved on the Black Buck Rays. Now, you can get an upgrade set for that one as well. And the decals, I think, um, is it microscale decals do do them? Um, if you're not sure, check on Hannant's website um, or possibly eBay. All right. But as I say, for the benefit of the aircraft, and because she's the last flying Vulcan, I will be building her in this colour scheme. Okay. Uh, first off, you've got the familiar Airfix instruction sheet with all your footnotes. Um, 
and I think there's also a little history about the aircraft itself. Um, then oh, this is done in pamphlet form obviously and then obviously you've got the guide as to what everything is here like don't eat it, don't chew it, don't sniff it etc and all the various symbols that you see underneath and then the first stage obviously is the cockpit uh, it's very basic there's not a lot in it and to be honest with you it's not really worth super detailing up because once you actually get the actual canopy on painter up you're not going to see a lot anyway so you've just got a basic a base for the seats add the pilot and navigator in there um, which is the first stage of the construction and then the second set is where you um, assemble the intakes along with the fan blades as you can see there on both sides and then basically add the fan blades into the inner part of the wing uh, along with the back of the bay and obviously they're recommending you put 30 grams of weight in the nose otherwise she's going to be a tail sitter okay and then you add the two halves of the fuse large together along with the decal which goes on the front cockpit panel and there you are then you basically put the two halves of the tailplane together along with the ECR pod as you can see there okay and then obviously you assemble two wing halves right there as you can see add them to the fuselage along with the ECM pod and then the next stage is assembling the main undercarriage gear as well as the nose wheel leg okay and after that you add the bomb bay and unfortunately you don't have the option of having the bomb bay open because there's no detail unfortunately unlike the original release where you had the option of having the bomb bay open or alternately had it for the red steel missile okay um, and then you add the crew access ladder as well as the gun but the bay door on and then finally and then the penultimate one is where you add all the air inlets as well as the undercarriage doors and the undercarriage itself okay and all the end strokes by the, the back where the exhaust stubs are and then finally put the upper part of the canopy on and a few of the um, pit hot tubes etc and that's your construction done okay and obviously with this kit you've only got the one color scheme which is x-ray hotel 558 all right and the good thing is you've got all the views upper and lower with the wraparound camouflage okay right now with this kit it all comes in one big bag which you see there okay so for the benefit of this video i'll be taking each screw out one at a time. First off you've got the upper fuselage. Now unfortunately with this kit it's not recessed panel lines it is raised panel lines unfortunately and I don't know if you can see it there because if I bring the lamp a bit far forward you can see it's all raised panel detail so that is going to be a bit of a job. Um, sanding that all down and then having to rescribe all the panel lines yeah <laughs> yeah uh so yeah it's just going to be quite a job but it's going to be worth it and then obviously you've got part of the lower assembly which goes underneath the intake pipes front and rear wheels which you can see there again if you want to super detail it i think you can get some resin ones all right then you've got the main gate, uh, bomb bay doors. Okay, that's your crew hatch door, which you see at the front there. And obviously you've got the ECM pod and rear tail, which you see there. It is quite a thick plastic, so that just shows you the age of the kit. Now I think the original one came out around about the late 80s, so uh, it's not a new kit. And uh, I know Airfix, if you do think of bringing a retool the Vulcan out, do. All right, we're all crying out for it. And the Victor, that would be super. Um, and then obviously the next one, believe it or not, 
from the original moulds is the lower part of the fuselage which you see here again it's got raised panel detail unfortunately guys but all the same it's beautifully moulded okay um, there is a few bits of flash especially around the intakes here or the outlet valves uh, so you're gonna have to clean them up I'm afraid so it shows the age of the, the kit again with the um, undercarriage bays I have noticed that you can get a resin detail undercarriage bay set so I might do that as well then you've got the straights which go on to where the exhausts are and believe it or not you've got the added option of having the blue steel missile underneath this in case you want to do it in an anti-flash white scheme so I will probably get another one of this kit and do it in that so that version uh, but you've got the blue steel standoff bomb which you see here as well okay um, and then oh interestingly ah this is interesting you've got the option for the um, I don't know if I mentioned it the Sidewinder pods which went on XM607 for the Volkland, uh, Falklands version. So I might need to get another one for that version as well. So that's those two halves done. And the next sprue, which is the third, is the wing. Um, again, I'm afraid guys, it's a raised panel detail. And the undercarriage ray is a bit sparse, but like I said, you can get a resin upgrade set. And then obviously you've got the crew entrance ladder, which you've got here. The a part of the front bogey, which you see here. There is a bit of flash on this, unfortunately, so you'll have to do some cleaning up on it. And obviously the other undercarriage legs as well, which you see there. And... The undercarriage bay doors, which I think if I get any closer, actually I'll move my tablet out of the way, that's probably going to make life a little bit easier, sorry guys. There we go. But as I say, this is a big, big kit, and the size of this wing is huge. I mean, there's the size of my hand, right? That's just one range of the actual wing. So imagine how big this is going to be when you fit it to the main fuselage. Huge! <laughs> and there's one half of the actual rear rudder and tailplane. Okay. Okay, so that's that. And then on the final and I think fifth, fourth sprue, <clears throat> you've got the upper wing. Again, look at the size of my hand and the size of that wing. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> uh, as I say, unfortunately, you've got raised panel details. So, yeah, as I said before, it's going to be a case of having to sand down and rescribe. So, sorry, guys. Then you've got the fan blades, which are not bad, actually, I have to say. So, yeah. That's off the way fix for that and then obviously you've got the old crew figures if I can get them into shot not brilliant but there you go the seats not a lot of detail to them again but again once you've got that all buttoned up you're not really going to see anything and then obviously you've got the inlet and outlet valves um, right here which you can see okay guys which and your uh, fan blades go at the back here Again, the upgrade set will improve that as well. And you've got the rear part of the ECM pod, which you see there, and the rear part of the Blue Streak missile. Okay. And again, you've got some more undercarriage wheels there. Air inlet valves, which you see there as well. So there isn't a lot to this kit. Um, and obviously you've got the pit-up tube here as well. Um, so hence why I've actually gone to order the upgrade set to be honest with you and I might order some other sort of goodies to go with it and finally um, you got the decal sheet again these are I think are again done by Cartograph and you've only got the one option which is X-Ray Hotel 558 and then you've obviously got the city of Lincoln, George Cross, 
Union Jack, you've got the control panel decal here, which isn't bad. And they're nicely done. There's not a lot of film, so I think they're going to go down beautifully. So, although it's not the most perfect kit, um, a little bit of work can be done on it, and um, I will certainly be doing that. When I'm going to build her, I may start her on the latter part this year if I get time. Once I've got all my other builds out of the way. Failing that, um, probably I would suggest sometime in the new year. Alright. Anyway, although it's not a perfect kit, definitely go out and get one. Um, once you build it up and do a bit of work on it, etc. She will look beautiful. And to be honest with you, what Lenny did with his looks superb. And I know Charles at Seal Modelling... He also built this kit and he heartily recommends it, so do I. Anyway, until then, get busy on the workbench and I'll speak to you guys soon. Alright, take care.